Hey everybody, Chuck here with Full Blown Hunters. I'm uh, sitting out here in the garage reminiscing about uh, the experiences I've had with my boat so far. It's my first boat and I haven't taken it out for a fishing trip yet. Tomorrow's actually going to be the first time. So uh, just sitting here thinking about it and I thought I might, you know, share my experiences and, and, and my setup for what I believe to be, a, you know, the perfect hunting and fishing boat for me. So... Uh, Let's check it out. So this is a 14 foot low John boat. When I bought the boat, uh, it was pretty much bare. The guy before me did the decking, the carpet, and it had the 40 thrust Mini Coda trolling motor, and it had a battery. So since getting the boat, I made several changes first thing i did was got the trailer lights working he, he told me that there was a short in the wire but i ended up replacing all the wiring because it was so uh so beat up and so rotted out so the wiring harness is all brand new on here uh starting at the front we got a led bar light six inches i got this at harbor freight with a coupon code for 25 bucks off it only made this thing like 25 or 30 bucks total uh, super bright. I'll uh, fire that up here in a minute. I'm also um, working on changing this. This is currently the, the night navigation light, but I don't like the way this came out, so I'll probably change this here sooner than later because I plan on doing some night fishing and bow fishing and stuff like that. Uh, just behind the light here, I have a little battery box that I created with some uh, junctions inside of here, a ground and a positive. And uh, I have the mini coda wired directly to those. And then the wiring runs down along the side of the boat all the way to the back where the battery is. Uh, there's a bracket here that I built because I couldn't get this trolling motor to sit right and operate right on the front. The idea of it ha being on the front is that when I'm on the front of the boat fishing, if I'm not happy in my current location but I want to change you know, maybe just 50 yards instead of going all the way to the back of the boat and then just firing it up and jumping locations, I can just turn this on real quick. You know, it'll, it, it moves about, moves the boat at about four miles per hour, which is pretty good for, you know, that little motor. Uh, so I had to build this bracket in order for it to sit right. And, uh, you know, it came out pretty good. You know, it's just kind of came up with something in my head and built it. And, uh, connected to this, I have a Hummingbird Piranha Max 4 fish finder. It's just the cheaper $100 fish finder. Like I said, this is my first boat. I didn't want to go too crazy. I got about less, almost just, just under $2,000 invested in this entire boat. Uh, and that includes uh, license, uh, titles, taxes, all that stuff. So uh, right here, I put the fire extinguisher in. I didn't want to put the fire extinguisher anywhere near the back because that's where the fire would most likely be an issue having you know a gas tank and everything. So right here is the fire extinguisher. Uh, I got two rod holders on the front here. Both are swivel. Uh, I got a cleat here. I got a cleat in the center. And then I got one on the very back next to the motor that I'll show you. Uh, right here is just the, the standard bench that comes with it. Uh, I didn't, I decided not to fill all this in and make this like doors or anything. I thought I'd just leave this wide open. I have, um, an, an oar and, uh, or, well, I guess just a paddle and, uh, all the safety stuff underneath here, uh, first aid kit, all that good stuff. Um, we got just a little collapsible cooler in here for tomorrow. You know, this ain't permanent or anything, just small enough to, uh, hold our bait and our drinks and some snacks. Uh, I got this guy right here, just held in with some bungee cords on the sides and on top to hold everything in. And then of course our tackle box, uh, the fishing rods. I just kind of stuck them in this little sleeve here. And then I just threw this guy down, just kind of hold them in place for the trip to and from the water. Oh, uh, let's see here. If we walk down this a little bit, we'll see this, uh, other junction box. Now this one I actually went on Amazon and I paid about five bucks or 10 bucks and I got this light light switch kit. Um, the current, the third one is currently not used. One of the light switches controls this back navigation light. And then the other one controls the front here. We can walk up, 
you can see that those lights kicked on and you can see that light there kicked on super bright and then i still have an opening on the, the other switch which is pretty cool one other cool thing is you can plug in and charge your phone anything with usb it also shows me my voltage you can kind of see whenever i turn off a light my voltage rating will go back up that's pretty cool. Uh, I took this out once as I could test and I ran that mini Coda for a while. And I mean, it, you know, it didn't even drain half that, that battery over, you know, like a three hour use of having the fish finder and the trolling motor in full operation plus charging the phone. So that's, that's pretty cool. Also, I just have a, a toolbox here or a safety box, whatever you want to call it. Open this up. I've got, uh, you know, the main safety stuff on the top. Then I've got some tools, some extra parts. And I got some stuff down in there. Pretty much this little box is holding everything I would need to replace uh, a broken shear key for my uh, five horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor. Uh, and I just kinda, I'll just kind of throw this off to the side anywhere inside the boat. It's heavy enough and ain't gonna fly out or nothing. Um, so yeah, I got another cleat here. And then I got another cleat on the back over there in the corner. Uh, both the seats, I got all this equipment at Walmart for pretty cheap. Uh, I can actually take that center, center rod out and then have the seat just slide right into that hole there. Um, and I just have a, a wood support here and then supports on the sides. And uh, this thing holds well, pretty well. And the cool thing is whenever I'm fishing, I can just remove that seat if I just want to do like bow fishing or whatever up there. If I want to, you know, have some room to move around, it's a pretty cool spot. Uh, so on the back here, we have two just uh, cheap rod holders. I don't think I need anything special back here, you know. So one here and then one over on this side. And then this seat here is currently just locked in place and has the, the, the black square swivel setup that you can get at Walmart or any other store. Uh, I kind of don't like it because whenever I am fishing, you're kind of leaned. Whoever's sitting here is kind of lean, leaning the boat to the side, throwing the balance off just a bit. This is a smaller boat. Uh, I think what I might buy is they, they have uh, an attachment that goes in between that and that swivel part that's there, but it allows it to slide like 12 inches. So if I set it up to where it's perfectly centered all the way, slid to the to the right of the, or the left of the boat, then whenever I want to steer the boat, I can just sw slide right over, lock it in place, and then reach back. I think it's on, it's on uh, Amazon for like 60 bucks. So I'm probably going to get that here pretty soon. You know, we're almost at the end of season for fishing and, and anything fun outdoors as far as warm weather. I will be using the boat for uh, hunting and things like that. So I'll be using this thing year round. Uh, so on the back here, you know, we got the night navigation rear light. Uh, we have an extra gas tank just for now, uh, dep depending on, I don't, I'm not sure. This is just kind of a temporary setup in case I get low on gas. I'll probably make a more permanent setup. Maybe have two of these little three gallons. Uh, one on each side and I can just unplug and switch. I don't know yet. I gotta, I gotta think about it. Uh, the battery located right there. I put it in a battery box um, just to kind of keep anything metal from touching the positive while I'm out, you know, so I drop a wrench or something if I have to work on the boat or whatever. Uh, we'll go around and we'll take a look at the motor and the other setup here. So like I said, all this pretty much came from Walmart that I had to buy for this. Uh, so I got the tank, the line here with the full setup here. And what I did was it comes, it, I, I just got uh, some Velcro straps holding this down, but then I also put this going down and in between here on the inside, and then it just wraps around and it kind of just holds this guy in place so it ain't bouncing around and going anywhere. Uh, this is just like a, a waterproof bag that we can put all our stuff in that we, you know, it floats and everything. And, you know, for whatever reason, the boat sinks or something. You know, all of our personal stuff, keys and phones, everything will be in there. So, yeah, so this line goes up and I got it zip tied right here. Just kind of hold this in place. And then it goes down, up around into the motor. And it's pretty cool because I can turn this thing and it's not getting any restriction, not kinking, nothing like that at all. So I have full, full turning range without any obstructions. Uh, so over here, you can see the... Uh, the trans or not the trans yeah the transducer for the fish finder um this is my first one bear with me so i just ran the line all the way back and it just jumps right over the edge there zip tied there and it comes down and i just took a piece of silicone and i still kind of silicone it in place so it won't move right here 
and then I put a permanent mount in right here because these mounts are pretty cheap and then I got it set up right there and I've tested that once in the water and it worked great uh, okay here we are at the motor this is a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor uh, I bought this thing for pretty much 350 bucks since buying it and taking it out the first time I had some issues I ended up finding out that um, I had a, a little issue with it wanting to start while I was out on the water it seemed to start just fine at home but the minute I got it out there you know you have the boat curse and since I'm new, of course, it's gonna give me some problems. But basically, these five horsepower Briggs and Stratton motors, outboard motors, they have a rev limiter to protect you from uh, over revving it and breaking the motor. Uh, you know, it's pretty much a lawnmower motor, but lawnmowers have like a locked on blade underneath and you can't really go over the RPMs that, it, you know, and it'll never max out. With this one, they got that in there to protect it from that. Um, I ended up figuring out that in the neutral position, this thing is supposed to be receiving a ground signal from where, from inside where the shift linker edge, shift linkage is, and that will allow it to start. If it doesn't get that, it won't allow spark to go through and and fire it up. So, needless to say, I pulled this thing about a hundred times. I had no idea why it wouldn't start my first time out. You know, for the practice. But I got that figured out. I've had I put a new fuel pump on it. Um, I adjusted the air fuel mixture and the idle screw on this motor. Um, I put some new fuel line on it, new spark plug, new oil, new gear oil for the gears. And uh, I mean, it, it, it seems to run really good now. Uh, new, I put a new rev limiter in it just because um, it runs great. I had to put some new shift linkage in it because part of it was broken and kind of just held together. But uh, I can start it up for you, kind of see what's going on with it. I wish it had a little bit more power. I'll find out tomorrow just how fast it, it moves my my boat with its current setup. You know, it's going to have two people on it, plus um, all the fishing gear. So, so basically, just give this guy here a little pump. That ball should get nice and tight for me. And then the first pull, I pull the choke, kind of choke the motor a little bit. He had already wanted to start first try. There it is. Fired right up. If these things don't fire up within two or three pulls when they're cold, something's wrong. I can tell you right now, something's just wrong. So you can, whenever I rev this up, you'll hear it. You know, basically reach its rev limiter and be and be kind of tacking off. That's the rev limiter right there kicking in. This is currently in neutral. Got a little lever here. If I turn this, pull it forward. It's now in, in forward. Back in neutral. All right, back in neutral it is. Now here's the thing about this motor. It actually can produce way more power, okay? Right now, it'll only go so fast in the water because of that rev limiter. But if I were to unplug this rev limiter, Now you gotta be careful here. But in the water, with that rev limiter unplugged, you know, you're gonna have, you know, a, a load on the motor and it's not gonna reach, it should not reach max RPMs and blow up as they would say. But without that plugged in, no rev limiter now. You can get a lot more power out of this. So, you know, pretty cool motor. Back in. Go ahead and turn this thing off. So, 
Yeah. Five horsepower Briggs and Stratton. I've got about $600, $700 invested in this motor. Probably a little too much. They're really popular for guys who like to go out in the winter. It's like, you know, duck boats. These things are perfect for duck boats. It's an air-cooled motor. It's not super fast. It's not super loud. It does have a lot of vibration, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, these things were, you know, bought up pretty quick by duck boat hunters because you don't have to worry about setting this thing up or winterizing it. Uh, you know, you can just throw it out there and go pretty much. I run 10W30 because I like to get it. I want to get it out there in the cold and, uh, you know, just a straight up uh, 30 weight. You know, I don't really like the idea of that. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's a great starter motor for me and I think it's perfect for this boat. I'm hoping it'll do at least 10 miles an hour on the water. I've seen other videos where the boats are pretty bare, doesn't have all this equipment and they seem to move pretty good. So I'm hoping to get that same, you know, same kind of experience. So, you know, that's kind of my boat setup. you know, comment and tell me what you think. I'm kind of starting my own outdoors channel. Uh, big into hunting public land for deer and turkey and I'm uh, I haven't really fished since I was a kid because my my dad passed away and uh, he used to take me all the time when I was little so I've kind of just been out of the idea of it but now that I've gotten into more outdoors I definitely want to go catfishing and, and kind of be an expert at that so I got a lot of practice to do so this is the my boat setup 14 foot John boat with a five horsepower Briggs and Stratton motor uh, excited to get this thing out tomorrow for our a fishing trip for me and my wife. It'll be the first fishing trip. We're going to go on the Merrimack River here in Missouri. I'll uh, probably do some filming tomorrow with the GoPro. If we uh, have any success, I'll make sure to post a video. Thanks, guys.